it's a great pleasure for me to introduce the first speaker of today. He's a professor Elizabeth Gasparin from uh, Universidad Católica del Norte in Chile and uh, Universidad de Trento in Italy. And uh, she's a specialist in algebraic geometry, simplex geometry, and Lie theory. And today, probably, she will talk about how to mix these three pieces. Elizabeth, go ahead. Thank you, Lino. Oh, thank you, everyone, for the invitation to speak. So it's, it's great fun to be again with the Lie theory people. We keep finding new and new ways of using Lie theory to solve all kinds of problems uh, in geometry, sometimes symplectic, sometimes algebraic. And so up to now, we have done lots of things about mirror symmetry using techniques from Lie theory that I learned from Luis mostly, also from Lina. And um, we did a lot of stuff on symplectic geometry. I will recall a little bit the things that we did. So these are things that I already discussed in July, but I, of course I don't assume that people who were here were there in July or that were there in July and remember. So I will have some things which are common, but there are new things, which we, so new things we understood and new proposals of things we should try to work out also from people here in Trento who propose new questions and so on. Right, so I, the idea for the people who know what side of the mirror I was before is this time to look at dual, so different types of work that are dual to the things we did in many different ways. So many will be three, I guess, but anyway, we'll see. Right, so I will label the different mirror symmetries. So this is mirror symmetry zero, not empty, zero. So mirror symmetry zero is the original kind for Calabial varieties, where you are looking for a pair of varieties which have Hodge diamonds that are symmetric in a specific sense. So the... Um, you, you don't need to know, ah, maybe now it's more clear. You don't need to know the Hodge theory, but in any case, if the Hodge diamond has this different um, invariance of the variety that come with two indices, and it has classical symmetries, conjugation, which means you have a symmetry on the vertical line, Hodge symmetry that's a symmetry on the horizontal line and side duality asymmetry under rotation. These are all very famous symmetries of the Hodge diamond for a smooth variety classically. Actually, someone announced a proof of the Hodge conjecture. Everybody seems to think it's completely wrong, but there is an announcement of such a thing. Anyway, the mirror symmetry zero is that varieties come in pair Calabria varieties, so that this following thing happens. Uh, if you have a variety that has a diamond like this, red and black, you then, then there exists a dual variety that has a diamond exchanging the two. So uh, that the numbers are exchanged and the mirror is in this line. So this is mirror symmetry zero. So we have, we're gonna have four of them. The most symmetric thing you can expect is an elliptic curve. So that's a torus fibered by cycles, which are the type A plus B. So in the torus, you have a, a cycle type A, say this running this way, uh, a type B cycle in homology that would be meridional kind of thing. And you fiber it by curves, which are A plus B in homology. So that when you make a dual, A plus B goes to B plus A, and you have exactly the same thing. So this is the best case of a Calabria variety where you do mirror symmetry and it comes out exactly the same. So this is the case where you buy your mirror very well, and what you see in the mirror side is precisely what you have. 
and all the diamond that couldn't be any more symmetric. So that's case zero. I have the figures of the mirrors that I had before, I'll show it again. But then, so that was for Calabiao, that means canonical bundle trivial. It happens a lot, actually, before I pass. Case zero, where Calabiao varieties happen a lot in Lee theory, all the parallelizable manifolds also satisfy in this case, because if you have trivial tangent bundle, then you have trivial cotangent bundle, so trivial canonical bundle, and so you're in case zero. And it will happen also for all the adjoint orbits uh, of um, semi-simple Lie groups. They're all Calabial varieties, so they all can be put in this case. It doesn't mean that they will be mirror to themselves, but it can, you can you can state the mirror symmetry for Calabial varieties for the joint orbits. Then the conservative proposition is to generalize to any type of variety, so not necessarily Calabial, but making the correspondence completely different between symplectic geometry and algebraic geometry. And so on the symplectic side, the typical variety is cotangent bundle of anything. Cotangent bundle of any variety. It can be like real, manifold, anything. It, it Cotangent bundle of some manifold has always a symplectic structure. So the best example on the symplectic side is cotangent bundle of something. And on the algebraic geometric side, the best example is some algebraic variety. So in principle, you want a duality that takes one from cotangent bundle of something to algebraic geometry. Uh, right, what happened? So these figures I shown last time in July. So mirrors, one variety can have many mirrors and one variety can, may have just one mirror, but it may be very bad. And then our, my favorite one that uh, is a, something that can happen is if something doesn't appear in the mirror, meaning if you have an object in one side, which doesn't appear on the other side, which is then a vampire kind of thing. And I will recall a little bit how we found one such vampire type of manifold. Right, and now there's a new thing that I want to discuss today. So. All the mirror symmetries are to be discussed in families, always. So you can vary the symplectic structure, you can vary the complex structure, you can write families in whatever way. And everything is supposed to be understood very in families. So it's like this, I like this slide very much. What if the mirror depends on like the clothes that you're wearing, sort of, you go to the mirror, this guy has a blanket, man. There's a, in the, when you put this blanket, he invented that. It. It's an invisibility cloak. It's a quite famous new invention, actually, that you put it and presumably makes you look invisible. The invention in itself, what it does is match the surrounding patterns of the ambient, so you disappear. Anyway, this kind of thing can happen. So uh, we should think as the complex structure on a particular C infinity base exactly like that as you're changing the clothes like that and so something which did have a mirror may then disappear right so that was zero and commons and now this homological mirror symmetry one so so this is hms1 is the kind that we have studied before when on the symplectic side you have this fukaya category and this fukaya category um, is made of uh, Lagrangian sub varieties and vanishing cycles. I will show some explanations of that. So that's the A side, the symplectic side. And on the B side, the algebraic geometric side, you have uh, an algebraic variety, ideally a projective variety, means something that embeds in projective space. And you have the derived category of coherent sheaves on it. So over the variety, your objects would be vector bundles, sheaves, and things which are derived from them. Derived means taking direct images, pullbacks, and so on, extensions, and all that. So that's version one. In version one, so one can consider both sides with functions. 
So these are landau ginzburg models. On the A side, the symplectic side, that means you have a manifold, which is symplectic, together with a function to C. That's your superpotential. On the B side, same sort of thing, but it's then an algebraic manifold or variety. I should have written variety here with some complex function again called the superpotential. So both sides come with functions. And one is to have in mind that these complex functions are supposed to be generalizing uh, Morse theory, real Morse theory, the height function of Morse theory. All right. In, a, in either case, in both sides, we have a one parameter family. You see, Luis has a much superior thing to this. He has a little slide that shows this vanishing side. So I don't have that, but I'll have uh, such a kind of slide later on. Right. So in both sides, you have one parameter families. And the question is, you do algebraic geometry or symplectic geometry with your object. Our objects that I've been discussing for a while that we started doing since I was in Campinas a long time ago, <laughs> like five, six years, I don't know, are so the adjoint orbits of um, semi-simple groups. And, and so they have been enormously fun to study, for which reason we continue to study and explore them and find always more and more interesting things to say. So a joint orbit of, of a fixed element. So here, this element is H naught. So um, the adjoint orbit can always be looked at as a symplectic manifold. In our case, we put the symplectic form as the imaginary part of the Hamitian form coming from the Lie algebra. You can also look at it as an algebraic variety very easily because the variety itself. So the, if you look at the adjoint orbit as a variety, it's defined by the minimal polynomial of the element you chose. So all the matrices that satisfy the same minimal polynomial. So the minimal polynomial, uh, it, it's written in terms of matrices. It will then have as many equations as the entries of the matrix. And they will give equations for an embedding of the orbit itself inside the Lie algebra. So you can also look at it on the other side, algebraically. Right, and then the theorem with Luis and Lino that we showed that these adjoint orbits of, uh, the same simple adjoint orbits have the structure of left shift vibrations. These are, these were then the um, landau ginzburg models that we look right? So the orbit is our space and this is, our potential, and it satisfied all the uh, necessary conditions. So uh, I want to compare, so this I showed also in July, but this is important. I want to compare that uh, orbit to the cotangent bundle of a flag manifold. So you see, we have this very precise comparison between the cotangent bundle of a flag. So if, suppose we take the adjoint orbit of SLN, then the corresponding flag of the compact part would be a flag then of SUN. And there is some isomorphism, so a real isomorphism between the adjoint orbit and the cotangent bundle of the flag. Right, so this is very fun. One of the, uh, things I want to comment about or to study is uh, the family that one can write between the cotangent of the flag and the adjoint orbit. In the language of deformation theory, the adjoint orbit is a deformation of the cotangent bundle of the flag. In real geometry and in complex algebraic geometry. So again, if we put both of them, not on the symplectic side, but both of them on the B side, that would be the complex side, then this is very exactly positioned to study mirror symmetry in families because the cotangent bundle of the flag always deforms to the adjoint orbit, not the other way around. The cotangent deforms to that. The deformation loses in, the ter in terms of complex geometry, the deformation loses the flag. The flag is a complex subvariety 
in the Cotangent bundle, it's a Lagrangian subvariety symplectically, it's a Lagrangian subvariety in the joint orbit, but it's a complex subvariety in the Cotangent bundle, but it's not a complex subvariety in the joint orbit. The joint orbit is an affine variety. That means it's given by polynomials in a fine space, in fact, inside the Lie algebra. That means it cannot possibly have compact sub-varieties. And so from the complex point of view, there is no flag contained here in the adjoint orbit. It disappears. So uh, that's very, very different from what happens on the symplectic side. OK. Uh, also, the regular fibers, the same thing. You can look at the regular fibers as symplectic submanifolds or also as complex submanifolds. That's simple to see in the complex side because uh, there is a regular value theorem for the complex geometry. Right. So we did, a long time ago, I gave, so in 2017, I gave a little course saying, a Applications da teoria de Lie à geometria simplética. This was the fastest written of my papers ever, together with Carlos Bassani, Varea. And Carlos wrote it very fast. His part he wrote in one night. So it's uh, an article that has two records. The fast to write, fastest ever to write and the slowest ever to publish. It took more than four years <laughs> to get published. So it was, uh, it was extreme in both cases. Anyway, now there's a new goal. Right? So we could do, instead of applications of Lie theory to symplectic geometry, we can do more general applications of Lie theory to mirror symmetry. That means, so we have done so many things on the symplectic side with the joint orbits. Now we take the joint orbits and put them on the other side, on the complex side, and do everything again, rethink. One thing doesn't imply the other at all. It's a completely new problem. So let's see. On the Foucault side, so on the symplectic side, our objects were Lagrangian thimbles and vanishing cycles. What are the corresponding things on the complex side? So um, the corresponding things to the vanishing cycles will always be um, a, vector bundles or sheaves, absolutely in every case. So if we put the adjoint orbits on the other side, we have to find, instead of vanishing cycles, specific sheaves, which are best in some case. Now, what are, what are the best sheaves will depend, because there is more than one recipe. On the symplectic side, there is Foucault category, and that's it, always. On the algebraic side, there are two possibilities. So I will show what they are. But in any case, they will be sheaves or vector bundles. And the thimbles and the homomorphisms between them will all correspond to homological algebra. So everything will come from extensions and direct images of vector bundles and sheaves, which I'll show. So there are two choices of how one can put the adjoint orbits on the other side. So let me say what they are. Oh, I have a drawing of thimbles. Uh, every time I f when I make the slides, then I forget. But um, yeah, in this case, uh, that's Severin's drawing. In this case, you have some hint. Because if your thimbles are like that, and they here we have two thimbles that have a common boundary, then you know that on the other side, you're looking for two vector bundles or sheaves that have homomorphisms between them. It may not happen, but you, you have, so you, you, you need to have, so if your vector bundles would be like L1, L2, you're looking for something that have homomorphisms, home L1, L2, not zero. So you know what to expect from the homological algebra of what would be on the other side. Uh, my vanishing cycle favorite picture, I always have to repeat, because together with vanishing cycles come always some monodromy around some singularity in both sides, both cases. 
the monodromy values should be the same. So in one side, it will be monodromy of vanishing cycles. The other side will be monodromy of um, derived images of constructible sheaves. It's long to explain, but the values will be the same. Right, this is the Fukaya category that we knew, and I want to then to remind you that there is a specific definition of Fukaya category. It's complicated, but uh, it uses Lagrangian floor homology, it's so very fun. This Lagrangian floor homology in the algebraic side then will get translated uh, always to homological algebra of two different kinds. The homological algebra is the same extensions of vector bundles, extensions of sheaves, a modulo isomorphism and what changes, what in both cases are in, there are different isomorphisms. So in one case, the isomorphisms will be just isomorphisms of vector bundles or sheaves. And the others, in the other case, it will be a modulo homotopy. So isomorphisms, in the sense of quasi-isomorphisms of complexes, which translates into isomorphisms modulo homotopy of maps. It's uh, long, but doable. Anyway, our example of the adjoint orbit, when we did the adjoint orbit of SL2, let me put it all at once, um, which was the first simplest case to study. So at first, this one has then uh, two eigenvalues. Um, sorry, this, these are the matrices. Uh, it's siesta time. Give me a second. Let me take a, a sip of something. I should have made more coffee. Anyway, OK, I'm still awake. All right, so the SL2 case, so the orbit of all matrices which have these two eigenvalues. And um, for this particular orbit, the potential had two singularities, and we resolved everything and got the Foucault category that corresponded to that. It is a difficult calculation. It's not that one calculates Foucault category all the time. This is difficult to everybody to calculate, but we did that. And then this one is the one that has no mirrors. So this together with Balico, my collaborator here in Trento, Severin Weimar, my former student, Lino Gramma, and Luisa Martina. And so we showed that these had no projective mirrors, even if we compactified, which meant this thing. Um, so if you take any projective variety, then, uh, the derived category of coherent sheaves of it will never be equivalent to this category we found there. So this was the Foucault category of the SL2 example. So the very first simplest one. And in this sense of homological mirror symmetry, so recipe number one, it has no mirror at all. So as bad as it can get. Now, you see, this is extreme in the sense of deformations. It's, it's a very nice thing because the, S, the orbit of SL2 is a deformation of cotangent P1. So now I'll show, I'll show you cotangent P1 is the best case, the self-dual case. So let me compare those. Ah, I had this slide before. So if I take cotangent P1, instead of the orbit, right? I just take that and put it on the symplectic side. And I try to do the mirror, so I'm on A side. Then, it because it's a toric variety, uh, you, you don't need to worry about the toric variety, or if you know what it is, nice. You just know that toric varieties are easy to calculate. But if you don't know, don't worry. Just believe me, it's a toric variety. For toric varieties, the mirror symmetry statement is extremely easy. So I had drawn things as a game. And in the case of toric varieties, it's like th there are two data, two pieces of data, which is uh, infinitesimal actions or monomials of the one parameter subgroups, actually, of the torus action. So toric variety has a torus action. And uh, the, the torus is a C star torus. 
and uh, this has this then uh, the toruses can also be seen as uh, the tangent space to the toric varieties and the infinitesimal action on monomials gets written down in a matrix which one puts down it's the first data of your toric variety it's very simple in theory right because it's a group action with a abelian group the second piece of data of the toric variety is the set of divisors in the toric variety the torus is contained in the variety densely and the boundary part are the divisors so the variety minus the torus gives a set of divisors which you then write as another matrix and in this language mirror symmetry is simply given by exchanging the two matrices so it's like you're playing the mirror symmetry game but you have twin players that play in, in, in both teams right so you have two uh, right forwards which are twins and two left forwards that are twins so the mirror uh, so the mirror symmetry in the toric case is the absolutely simplest case to study and it's precisely the case of cotangent bond of p1 you can write a potential you can choose i wrote it down the exact potential so that the landau ginsburg model formed by the cotangent p1 comma potential is self-dual so you so now think what's happening in under the formation it's quite a beautiful thing to study i think if you start with cotangent p1 and this potential it's self-dual so this thing is exactly like this elliptic curve you have cotangent bond of p1 and this potential and on the other side you have exactly the same thing as soon as you do a deformation of it then it deforms to the adjoint orbit of sl2 which we call the o2 and that's as bad as it can be right that's this guy that has no mirror so it's incredibly dramatic right so you start with the absolutely best mirror possible something that reflects exactly the same thing do a small deformation this is called an infinitesimal deformation you don't go very far you just deform cotangent p1 you immediately the next neighbor of it will be the orbit of sl2 which has no mirror so so it's very drastic great uh this this i'm making the deformation i'm making is a complex variety so i had this actually in july as well in this case uh if you're doing the homological mirror symmetry game and you put the adjoint orbit on the symplectic side then you're definitely symplectically winning the game right on the b side you don't have anything in homological mirror symmetry recipe one right but then there is homological mirror symmetry recipe two so second one which i as i explained before works at least in the case of sl2 the orbit of sl2 extremely better because now here there will be a mirror so now we, it's the same object you put a different mirror in it that's what's happening right so you expect so on the on the Fukaya side on the symplectic side you put the exact same thing but on the other side you now look for a different object completely and the different object is that it's not anymore coherent sheaves on a variety but it is now the all of category of singularities of the variety together with a potential so now you're looking for a different pair so this is second recipe of mirror symmetry and it's calculated in a completely different way now if we want to put which is my proposition of today right to put the adjoint orbits on the other side so you can choose coherent sheaves or you can choose category of singularities the category of singularities anyway is made of the coherent sheaves so how are coherent sheaves written down you just write a sequence of vector bundles so you write some complex where e1 e2 en etc are vector bundles on your on your x 
on your manifold that you choose with morphisms between them and uh, right and so uh, this is called this is what is said by locally free right locally free in the algebraic geometry language means you write vector bundles and in the case of the category of singularities it's not exactly on x you sum over all the critical fibers the category of singularities of each of the fibers separately so it's just sound sort of disjointly each one at a time and then you calculate this quotient in the quotient you have this the notion of quasi isomorphism and it's a hard thing to calculate in general quasi isomorphism it's it's long it's lots of steps but in my view, so in my idea, that's why I, I believed in the singularities category strongly, is I think the quasi-isomorphism corresponds much better to floor homology. Floor homology is a very non-trivial thing on the symplectic side. So it couldn't just correspond to extensions as it was in recipe one, but it couldn't only to us. We were the only ones to find some vampire type of manifold for our other people have been working with the other kind okay so in this case there is a entire recipe it's an entire algorithm which is this uh, intrinsic mirror symmetry recipe of gross and Siebert, which is quite long but what you do is you take the manner manifold you started with and you put into you put this into a what's called a log Calabial pair. So your space itself should be Calabial to work on it and you compactify it. Now, this you can do in their recipe in both sides, symplectic or complex. Now you can compactify the adjoint orbits and put it to, into a Calabial pair in, in either side. One can choose, but it always works. Then you have to look in to compute difficult algebraic geometric stuff if you put it on the B side. But in both in both cases, you compute stuff. In the symplectic case, it's worse. You have to compute the gromov witten invariants. Those are very hard to compute. In the algebraic geometric case, it's better. You just compute intersections of sub-varieties. But anyway, it's a long recipe, but it works and one can calculate. So with that, I, as I explained in July, with that you find a mirror to the Landau-Ginsburg model that we had of the SL2 um, adjoint orbit. So that exists, there, there is an equation and a potential. The potential is very simple to write and you write it down and so on. this produces a mirror. So that means that if we use this mirror recipe and re even if you do the deformations, then you start with cotangent P1, you deform it to the adjoint orbit of SL2, and now you can carry out the mirror symmetry for each of the elements of the family, and everything has a mirror. So it doesn't become so tragic like before, that you start with a self-mirror thing. It still be, the, the cotangent P1 with the potential I said would still be self-mirror here, but, uh, it's unclear which potential one should choose to make this family nice. You need to make the family somehow compatible. So the, the potential that naturally goes into this family for the cotangent bundle is not that one I chose to make things self-dual, but it's actually exactly the same for the orbit, essentially, just one of the coordinates. So this family looks very nice if one wants to actually study it entirely, like to try to do the mirror on the entire family. One option would be to do just look at the higher dimensional object, right? look at the family that contains both the cotangent of P1 and the orbit together. That would be nice to do. Anyway, the idea that also I showed before is that um, in the case of the adjoint orbit, we had two critical points, and it's like taking one coordinate as the potential, whereas in the mirror side, it was just taking the other 
coordinate the potential. Now what? So at this point, with the homological mirror symmetry recipe two, this now tied the game. So now we have an actual um, tie, right? One to one. Now new one, right? That's only the, that's that was the new thing of today. So so this is uh, quite different. So the story is now, suppose you put the adjoint orbits, for example, on the B side, like I would like to do now. So that means you look at this complex varieties. And now there is also the possibility of changing the complex structure on it. You can also vary the complex structure on that itself, or start with cotangent and vary. Now what can happen? Now let's see. I hope this is going to work. Let's see if I can click on it. Oh no. Wait, I think I need to give me a moment. I tried it before. You see, because Luis had a movie on here, so I want to have a movie too. So I want to show, this is really great. So think, I want to show you, think of the uh, complex structure on the variety, like as, oh, it opened many times. That's why it's going slowly. Let me open just one. So you think of the complex structure as like you change the clothes of the variety, right? So what could happen? So I want to show, this, this is really great. It, it doesn't even have to be geometry for it to be great. This is this guy's invention. I want to buy one. So let's see if it plays. It's one minute. So. Oh, shit. to show any more of that probably everybody wants to buy one now but anyway he really built this this is a thing that mimics the surrounding uh the surrounding landscape so that you become invisible anyway so that's my illustration of changing the clothes it means changing the complex structure right so how where are we now so um we have partial success with intrinsic mirror symmetry recipe in the following sense. Why is it partial? So I constructed the mirrors for the minimal adjoint orbit of SLN. That means uh, in the case that the diagonal is n minus one minus one minus all minus one, so it's, you just have that. What could happen? So there's one of the families I offer to study. So suppose we are in SL3. And now the green points, P1, P2, P3, these are these are the drawings of this is Bruno's drawings. These are the drawings of the critical points that we have in the vibration for the minimal orbit. So the minimal orbit case, I know the mirror. Now suppose we take the bigger orbit in the SL3 case, which then would have six critical points. So that's the case when the flag is the flag F12, whereas in the minimal orbit, the corresponding flag is P2. So one can also write a family so that pairs of points flow to different points. So what is that? What is this supposed to mean? That's one of the families I propose to study, first of all, to, to do stuff on the algebraic side. So for the uh, maximum flag, for the F12, when we add two of the critical points, we get an, exactly one critical point of the other case. Uh, let me try to explain this better. So two vibrations, one on the black points, so one containing the cotangent, the flag, which is isomorphic to cotangent bundle of F12. 
That's the black one. The green one is the adjoint orbit, which is isomorphic to cotangent bundle of P2, with the critical points, which are the green ones. So if you add these two black guys, they go to this one, add this, they go to that, add this, they go to that. So you can explicitly write a family now going from, uh, so the, you have to change the flag, right? What do you do with uh, the flag F12 to go to the P2? Well, you kill the fibers, P1, right? The flag F12 is a P1 vibration over P2. So you have a P2, but fibers P1. The P1 is, you think, like a shrinking down. You kill the fibers, you get to the P2. So that should tell you how to go to these guys. And that should give an idea of what to do on the mirror side. So because now I have a mirror for the green vibration, I propose that the mirror to the black vibration should be obtained from the green mirror by whatever operation is dual to making points go together which is in algebraic geometry blowing up points. So you should, in the mirror, blow up some stuff to get to that. But in any case, that's the first thing I propose to study, that uh, to compare the mirror recipe for the uh, minimal orbit of S sub 3 with the general orbit of SL theory, which would be, let's say, of the element 1, 0, minus 1, but without calculating it all again, right? Just guessing it from, so you can guess the mirror and then prove its mirror. Okay, now, so, uh, so the other family to study, cotangent to flag, and now come my best slides ever. Slide number one, I'm so happy with them. <laughs> I hope you're happy. So you see, that's a different duality that is clear and that I want to explain. So these are five fishes and one star. So these are my adjoint orbit of SL6, uh, of GLs, uh, of SL6, and there are six critical points. When we look at the critical points for the adjoint orbit, five of them are at finite level. And the corresponding vanishing cycles are also at finite level. One of them is at infinite level. The star that I put is the vanishing cycle that comes from infinity. This happens to all of the LGN for n bigger than two. Three and on, there's always such a thing. So when I when you calculate the vanishing cycles, they have this kind of disposition. So you have always like n minus one finite ones and then one infinite one. In the mirror, it's exactly the opposite. So in the mirror, one remains at finite level, and all of the others are at the fiber at infinity when you compactify. So this is the duality that happens. So, so that, that is the duality that happens to the minimal orbit. And so now I want to just finish with the question, what is the guess for the flag that's self-dual? Do we have only fishes, only stars, or as many fishes as stars? Or what's happening? What's the configuration that one should expect? Anyway, but so the proposal is, which I say is in the complex side, not simplex. So for, don't worry about symplectic structure. Just look at that as a complex manifold and try to guess and to work out what should be the mirror then. And uh, so, one, two, three, four different mirror problems that one can consider in all of them, or each one individually, whatever, put the adjoint orbits in any of them. So now there is like an entire uh, family of choices of putting the adjoint orbits and calculating in each of those. Okay, so I stop here. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. Let's thank you, Elizabeth. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments for Elizabeth?
Oh, I forgot the part. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to I, say. I, I, okay, some uh, some team, please. No, no, I, uh, well, I just uh, want to, to make a comment that a, a an open problem for us in these questions is to compute the the Fukaya the Fukaya category and uh, the the thimbles uh, uh, from from and the intersection of the thimbles and the, well, at least to to get to get thimbles. Uh, well, for a long time I have been trying to to write down Lagrangian submanifolds with uh, having these in mind. Well, we wrote the several Lagrangian, Lagrangian uh, submanifolds in the adjoint orbit. Uh, but, uh, well, the, the thimbles were not written uh, up to now uh, because the Lagrangian, like the obtained Lagrangians are not, uh, are not, um, uh, were not enough to, to, to get the thimbles. One of the problems I, 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 I always found is that uh, the, for that potential uh, Elizabeth wrote, which is the height function of a uh, complex height function of, uh, of uh, a certain age, a certain uh, element of the, of the Cartan sub the algebra. Um, uh, it, it is a left shell. Uh, vibration with respect to the simplex form coming from the 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 hermitian hermitian form in the Lie algebra and not with the let's say uh, kks uh, uh, constant uh, of sohio or the canonical uh, uh, simplex form in, in the cotangent bundle or so it's a different uh, um, complex structure this uh, usually the technique to work with this is because of this uh, difference of uh, of um, of this different complex stru uh, simplex structure on the on the or on the cotangent bubble or on the adjoint world just so, this comment I, uh, so i think so forget the simplex structure for the moment Take the complex structure only. So you only look at it as a complex manifold. Then the regular levels are submanifolds by uh, regular value theorem for complex geometry. And now I think that when you will compute for the full flag, for the maximum flag, I think that that case will be self-dual. That means that then you will guess the mirror directly and you will then then you can calculate on the complex side vector bundles and sheaves. Vector bundles much easier to go, much, much, much easier. And if you know the vector bundles and you know that it's self-dual, you can then guess the thimbles. You will have the answer. That's, that's what I say. You put it on the other side and imagine it works self-dual, which I think that we have... SL2 is different. It's just... a difficult thing because it's very different we have much insight that never happens again on the other case i what i expect is that when you take the maximum flag it will be self-dual so you calculate the algebraic geometry case where you calculate what you really calculate is vector bundles and then the rest is homological algebra it it will come and then when you know precisely what you have on the algebraic side doing algebra only without thimbles with it. then you will and if you know by the recipe that it's self dual you will have the the thimbles by duality you on the other side you have the answer it will just produce the answer you see all the time you will we're trying the hard side but if you put it on the easy side and it's self dual we will get the answer oh, okay Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I have a problem putting it on the other side. Someone here told me, why don't you do vector bundles on it? But I looked at the literature, there's like lots of stuff of vector bundles on flags. 
And the demo needs to just pass from vector bundle on flight to vector bundle on the cotangent bundle, on the total space of the cotangent. But there are like an enormous amount of theorems for that, a lot. Just how to extend to the total space of the cotangent. But then it will be, it will be all theory. The work will be theory. You're going to do, you will need to do filtrations of vector bundles by, like if you have a font tool, right? You're going to have to do some corresponding filtration on the vector bundles because it is the base is a vibration with P1 and P2. That is a decomposition of the flag that should have a corresponding decomposition of the vector bundle. But we all know that vector bundles are much easier to study than everything, <laughs> than, I mean, than the varieties, than the Fukaya category, than the Timbo, than the symplectic geometry, than all of it. So it's simply a much simpler thing to do. So that, that's what I wanted to say to put on the other side. That's the idea. And then, we, but literally people should calculate vector bundles and write it in Lee style <laughs> so that it will be easy to translate right, to the other side. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, it's, uh, I think it's promising. More comments or question? Oh, I have a question, a little bit. When you put the picture, it will have six points, six black points, Q1, Q2, etc., and the three green points. And then ah, you really, okay. okay? And then yes. you make some designation to some deformation to the, dot, the, the black dot to the green dot. If you sum the two black, it will give you the green. Okay, but so, what means the the, 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 the the black? The black is the critical point of what? Sorry, recall, recall, of, of the adjoint orbit of one zero minus one. Okay, the, the full flag. It's a full kind of okay. In the three, the three is the cotangent band of the CP two, I guess. Correct. Okay. And uh, is this a relation to related to toric degeneration? Because the, the full flag is not torque and the CP2 okay. is torque and the, that is some literature on this yeah. ah, subject. Because the, the, the guy Q, the terms and the high, high degree in the, in the idea of the variety. And uh, I don't know, this is, when you put your picture, remember this, I discussed this with you. some what people some mean? years ago. But uh, uh, okay, but uh, no, it's just a, a question if it's related or no, if you think about this or no, because there's some. But kind then, of deformation in this 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 way, okay. But then with that comment, my guess should work all the better because then that's really how it's supposed to work. You degen you do toric degenerator, do the mirror, and then you uh, do the family on the other side. That's what Tony's been telling us to do like forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah because you define the, the mirror by the the the, the toric the degeneration, okay? By Good definition. Yeah. Better. I, I didn't hear yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> We yeah. should try. We should try. Okay. Okay. Oh, but that is it. also another way that we might guess the mirror to the uh, orbit of the full flag. Okay. These are all uh, alternative things that one could try because calculating the timbers is just oh <laughs> I don't know. I don't see it finishing in finite time. That's uh, the timbers are really mm, tough. Okay. Um, more comments or questions? Okay, let's thank Elizabeth again. Thank you. Okay.